Are you a pharmacy student who wants to improve your study habits? In this video, I share five ways to improve your study habits. Stay to the end where I share the most important step. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Jessica Louie and I'm a board certified critical care pharmacist, associate professor, and entrepreneur. I love helping people find meaning beyond burnout. On this channel, I share tips on passive income and simplifying your life to combat feelings of burnout and stress. I also share openly about my burnout story in pharmacy and how we paid off massive student loan debt. Make sure to watch those videos as well. This video is my personal opinion. As a student who spent nine years training into my profession, I tried a lot of different ways to improve my study habits. Whether it was from organization to focus, to different strategies and techniques, I tried it all in trial and error, different types of experimentation. And today I share my top five ways to improve your study habits. Step one. Find focus. Now I shared a video on five ways to find focus while studying, so you wanna check out that video as well. But in this video, I want to find focus by decluttering. Yes, decluttering and simplifying the environment around you in your study environment. Whether you're at a desk right now and you have different devices out, you have different papers, pens, calculators, textbooks all around you, I want you to think about how can you declutter this environment so that it can improve your studying and your focus. A lot of times we overlook this, but then the night before an exam, we want to clean up and organize all of a sudden because it's within our control. And if we already have an environment that's supporting us and supporting our study habits, then it can be so much easier to focus with what's around us. And of course, you know that I love decluttering with the KonMari method. You can check out videos on that and how you can declutter your office space with our digital decluttering workshops as well. Step two, be intentional. Now, how many of you have ever scheduled time on your calendar and decided I'm gonna study for two hours and you're just going through the motions of studying? You just have the piece of paper in front of you, the textbook in front of you, kind of skimming the information and nothing is really absorbing. You know, in the end of the day, going through the motions and being unintentional with your studying is not going to help you. We wanna be really intentional and know when is the best time of day for us to study, when it is the best time for us to absorb that information so that we're being effective and not just going through the motions during the day and saying that, oh, I put in my two hours or my four hours, but you didn't really retain anything. Knowing yourself and knowing when's the best time to study is really important. So you can get really intentional with this to figure out when is the best time for your brain to absorb that information so you're not going through the motions and you're actually retaining the information. This means that, you know, maybe you set aside morning time, afternoon time, and the evening time, and you see what works best for your schedule and your study habits. Also thinking about when's the best time to schedule this in on the weekends versus the weekdays with other things and commitments you have going on, whether it's for co-curricular activities or intern pharmacist positions, you want to make sure that it's fitting within your lifestyle because everyone's lifestyle is a little bit different. And then once you schedule something on your calendar, then you are going to keep that appointment with yourself. You're not going to break that appointment. You're going to be really intentional and you're going to sit down and see what's the most effective way to study, whether it's with flashcards or with medication charts or with teaching someone else the information, knowing that type of information so that you know how to study during that time. Step three, make it your own. Now we all know that there's a lot of information out there, whether you have piles of PowerPoints and worksheets and textbook chapters, all laying around you to study from. And I highly recommend that you start making it your own and seeing what type of study style works best for you. Is it best for you to summarize the information into a Word document with bullet points? Is it best to summarize the information into a medication chart to study all the drugs? Make it your own so that you are able to effectively study and don't see a pile of 100 pages to study for an exam that can be really overwhelming. Personally, I really loved studying for medication charts for drug information, so I was able to condense a hundred slide PowerPoint into a five page medication chart. It was much easier to study from. It had rows and columns that were easily organized, bullet points and color codes. And if you'd like to learn how to use medication charts to study your drugs, you can watch that video and also get our resources on the Find Your Script shop. Step four, apply the information that you're learning. Sometimes it can be really mundane that we get in the weeds of what we're learning and we're not seeing the big picture of how we're going to apply that information. So anytime you're able to apply what you're learning, I highly recommend it. Whether it's through a paid intern pharmacist position or a volunteer co-curricular activity or a simulation within your 
school of pharmacy or trying it on a real patient that you're working with can be really important. Whether that means you're giving immunizations, you're taking blood pressure, or working through a patient case with complex lab values and differential diagnoses with the interprofessional team. Applying that information can be really helpful. Also seeing the medications in real life and their boxes and their labeling can be really helpful. Remember, there's always this big picture, this broad overview of why we even want to learn this, and then more of a micro overview of why it's important to a smaller population. So make sure that when you're applying the information, you also step back and see the big picture besides the little picture. Step five, teach the information. The best way to learn information is to make sure that you're able to teach it to someone else, whether that's a classmate or a family member, being able to verbally teach it to someone else, maybe use a whiteboard or a blank piece of paper in that process process is really helpful. This is also really helpful to see how you can simplify the information while you're teaching it to make sure that you're being able to explain it in layman's terms to a patient, being able to explain it to another healthcare professional who might have questions for you. And anytime when you're teaching someone else and they're confused or they need clarification or you miss something, that's where you can go and fill in that gap later with your studying techniques. So what is the most important step in improving your study habits? I think the most important step is being able to teach the information to someone else. And a lot of times we forget about this. It's really about that application teaching step to really make sure that we've solidified the information in our brain. We don't have it all jumbled up and we're able to verbalize it to someone else, teach it with some diagrams or writing it out on a whiteboard to someone else. And I think this is really important for all students to be able to master through the program. Make sure you're taking actions to improve your study habits and getting our resources on the Find Your Script shop below. Until next time, cultivate joy.